So let's get started. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Anat and I'm from Waze Communities team. Um, so we have people from English speaking countries joining us today. This session will be held in English. And the reason I'm mentioning this is the fact that we will have this session in other language, languages in the future. So today we're going to talk about a few very interesting topics. We're going to talk about the Waze community and get to know the Waze map editor, or as we call it, the WME. We will learn how to add and edit roads, roundabouts, intersections and places, areas and points. We also have a very special guest joining us today. Joe, would you like to show your face? Joe from the US. Hi, Joe. Hi, everybody. My name's Joe, and you'll be hearing from me uh, after a not great presentation. Thank you, Joe. Uh, OK, so uh, Joe is from the US, and he will teach you in real time how to edit the map uh, so you can use all that you learn here later and start your journey as a Waze map editor. So if you have questions, feel, feel free to add them in the Q&A section that's right next to the chat box in this room. Before we move on to the next slide, I'd like to share a quick poll with you. I'm gonna start the poll right now. So please tell us about your editing experience. How many times have you edited in WME? Let's see. I see that results are starting to come in. How many times have you edited in the WME? You should see the poll on your screen right now. Please choose the answer that describes your WME experience. Okay, tell us, are you an experienced editor? Is this new to you? We want to make sure that people are here because they understand this is a basic editing webinar. Okay, so. Um, I see results from most of the attendees here, and I see many of the results uh, are from experienced editors. So I'm gonna close the poll now, and I'm gonna stress this one more time. Uh, this is a basic editing webinar. If you're an experienced editor, you're most welcome to stay. But this session might sound a bit slow to you because you probably know most of the things we're going to discuss today. So moving on to the next slide. What is this thing we call the community? The editor's community is a part of the Global Ways Communities Group. So let's see what each of the people of the groups in Ways is like. So the community is everyone using Ways, right? The most basic layer in Ways' community is everyone and anyone that uses Ways app to navigate. Their contribution is smaller they are the passive users. The second layer of more active Wazers and reporters are people who use Waze and report police hazards, gas prices, and more. You might have submitted a report through the app yourself. When you submit a report, one of the dedicated community members or staff support team uh, reviews the report and decides how to handle it. Later in this training, you will see how important these map reports are. And then we have the higher level of community members and activity level, that's the Waze Editor's community. Community members are intense contribu contributors who edit the map and add more information to it. And at the top percent of Waze users are our champs, just like Joe here, global and local champs. They are, um, their contribution is phenomenal, phenomenal. And I'm sure you'll get to meet them throughout your Waze journey. So, our community is also very busy localizing new features such as the toll pricing feature. If you're here, it means you're an avid Wazer. So you probably saw the toll pricing feature which was released about a year ago. This feature was made possible thanks to the editor's community who, have, who added booth locations and prices and they still, still do it regularly. Next time you search for a route and see information about toll, toll roads, know that you're seeing it thanks to a dedicated volunteer a Waze map editor who took the time to add the booth location and price to our map. We hope you choose to become active editors yourself. So you might also get to map toll booths and locations and prices. 
Other local features are restricted driving areas that you might have seen, gas station prices, which I assume anyone who drives has to tank up their car so they see the gas prices feature. Our dedicated editors community is made of wonderful people who constantly edit the map to keep all the local data updated so that hundreds of millions of people around the world could have a better navigation experience. As Waze map editors, your edits can impact people's drives every day. There are also other amazing communities that contribute to the Waze map. And as we said, the editors build and improve the map, they fix map issues, and they also mentor new editors. That's good for you to know. The beta community tests new versions and new functionalities and provides feedback. They are the ones uh, that get to see features first and uh, even before they're launched. The localizers translate content and localize features so they could feel hyper-local anywhere around the world. The partners community implements bulk municipal changes to the map and also finds leads to connect to ways. And the carpool community advocates for carpool and also helps remove blockers and onboard new carpool users. All of these are very exciting and vibrant communities. The handout we'll provide you later in this session will contain more links for you to learn about these communities and even join them if you'd like. So let's go back to our main subject, the editors community. We started as a blank map and through using the map and online map, map, map editor, we were able to build and continue improving the map. The community also fixes map issues and they mentor new editors. The community meets in a couple of different ways, both online and face-to-face -face when possible, of course. Online, there are forums, email, chat groups, and webinars. Face-to-face, -face, we have meetups all around the world when travel restrictions permit it. Not being able to meet the, meet the community face-to-face -face since the COVID outbreak, made us change plans. <laughs> and we currently hold various online events, which we hope you also choose to join, like our office hours. So just a second. So since COVID broke out, we started a new tradition. We have office hour sessions happening almost every other Sunday. Uh, during these sessions, we share updates, talk about features, and answer community questions. Next Sunday, August 9th, we have a very special office hour session lined up. Waze's head of product will join us, and he will share exciting plans for the future of Waze. So we highly recommend you join if you're interested in hearing our plans and where the product is going to develop to. The link for that session will be waiting for you in this session's handout. We will talk about the handout in a few minutes and we will make sure everyone has it. The editor's community also takes part in other exciting uh, activities and channel and challenges like the MTE challenge and map raids. MTE, MTE stands for major traffic events where the community uh, combines to, to update the map around closures and marathons Map raids are a joint effort between a group of editors that work together online to improve a certain area in the map. Those are really fun and you can learn about them in the community forum. After most of these challenges, we share a leaderboard and a hall of fame. So that way we acknowledge our editors' efforts and dedication. Our community members communicate regularly through the forum and over local channels, which are managed by the community, not by staff. In the handout for this session, yes, again, the handout, you will find links to join those channels as well. Our ongoing communication and events are a really great way to build a community for the people who want to know each other. Many community members shared that one of the great added values of being a map editor is getting to know new friends from all over the world, which is really exciting. Uh, and here's the community activity you can already take part in. This is very new. Our marketing team is looking to highlight the stories of active Wazers. If you'd like to tell us about your Waze story, your favorite Waze memory, or why you love using Waze, we'd love to hear it and possibly turn it into a social media or blog post. So if you want to share your story, please scan the QR code on the screen now or go to the link that I am sharing in the chat right now. Fill out this form 
And um, if you'd like, uh, a marketing uh, team member will contact you and you can take it from there. So now we're moving to the next slide. So in case you want to fill out this form, just keep it for later, please. So you won't miss out. So here in the community team, communities team, we have several ways of sharing resources with community members. To stay posted on community updates, use the forum and community channels you'll see in the handouts file. To find information and guidelines, we strongly encourage you to use these resources. We have Wazopedia. You can see the name on the left of this slide. It's a knowledge base managed by the community. It contains answers to many editing related questions. It's a huge uh, source of information for anything uh, editing related. It can really help you jumpstart your editing journey. The Wazer to Wazer site is managed by the community's team. That's a staff database, data site. And just browsing through it, you'll find so much information. You'll definitely find useful at some point. So it's good to know it. So if you're starting a bookmark folder for Waze map editing, these are the three sites that should already be there. The forum, Wazopedia, and the Wazer to Wazer site. And you'll find links to all of them in the handouts. And now after mentioning the handout like 6,000 times so far, let's actually download it. Please check the right hand side of this room. It should hold a file for you to download under the title of handouts. Please download, download it now. And if you're having trouble downloading it, write so in the chat so we'll see and be able to help you. The handout file, if you download it and keep it and use it, uh, it can help you kick off your editing journey because it includes useful resources like a link to the Waze Map Editor and Community Forums, slides with uh, some of the slides from this session today with common terms uh, you should know as editors, which we'll also talk about. Uh, links, as I've mentioned. So let's see, no handout shared. Wait, you're right, you're right. I'll click on the share right now. Handout share. I've clicked shared. Now I want to see that you're downloading it. Okay. Can you see it? I've clicked shared. No file on handout. Can someone please confirm that the handout is now available? <clears throat> really? I've clicked share. Let's see. No file. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Good. Okay, so now that you have the handout, and I apologize for not clicking share sooner, um, keep it for later. This could be a very useful resource for you as you start your editing journey. And I now realize that I'm so excited that I haven't shown you the whiteboard behind me with talented and wonderful artwork, very sketchy ways drawings. <laughs> Okay, so I'm happy you have the PDF. Keep it for later. It could be very useful. And now we can move on. So let's get down to business. Your first step as an editor, which we ask you to do after this session, is to go to the WME. That's ways.com slash editor. This address and other useful resources, as we've mentioned, are available for you in the handouts file. So don't worry about writing it down right now. So the first thing you'll need to do is to sign in, to sign in for uh, the WME. And in case you don't have your credentials, we have a few ways of helping you. We have the new QR code sign in option and you'll find information about it. Guess where? Yes, in the handouts. Um, if you are a Waze Live Map user, you can also log in to the WME through the Waze Live Map. So I, I'm not sure everyone knows Live Map, but it's a useful tool for checking out traffic when you're at home or at the office through the browser. Uh, okay, next slide now. Let's get to know the WME. We're going to go off, uh, over a couple of different areas of the map editor so everyone's very clear on what's available for you. So when Joe's turn comes up, um, he can smoothly start and tell you everything. Uh, although this might seem overwhelming now, you'll see it's easier once you start editing. And it's also fun. So this is the Waze Map Editor, or as we call it, the WME. Uh, this is the tool editors use to create and update the map. Isn't it exciting? Once you click any 
uh, road, any part of the road, of a paved road, you will see segment information coming up on the left side panel. This is all the information about the different parts of the road that you see on the map. Segments are the smallest units that make up a road. A segment is a section between two junction nodes, indicating a portion of the road. Keep in mind that at the beginning of your journey, and this is important to remember, you'll be able to edit roads within a one mile radius around the places you've already driven. The more you edit and drive, the more your permissions will expand. You can indicate road type, restrictions, and directions from that left side segment information section. Once you advance in your journey, you can also close parts of the road, or as we call them, segments. You'll be able to close segments. Right to, sorry, right on top, we have the search box, which allows you to search for longitude and latitude or address or even an intersection. And over to the right, you have the save button, which is a super important button. We ask that you click save very often. We recommend that you do it every few actions. Anything not saved will not get put into the map and it will also help you understand sometimes why an editing isn't saved. So over to the right, you can see the layers menu which is very important. The Waze map is made of many different layers. You can switch them on and off. And later, we will show you, here are a few images of the layers. So later, we will show you how to use some of the layers. Some are more useful, some are less useful, but they're very good for helping you understand what to edit and where things are. Okay, so next we have Street Street View, which is as it sounds, it's very useful uh, because you'll be able to see the road. Imagine, imagine editing in a place where you're not sure if the road is one way or two way. Actually being able to see the road in Street View helps you understand what's going on in the current location. The next button is the show my current location button, which uh, is obviously very useful. And next to it, we have the zoom button which is also very useful. Next up is the map chat, which is very important because um, it allows you to chat with all online editors editing in your current country. You can set yourself as invisible, but we encourage you to talk to your map editors of your country. It's a really great way to get to know map editors nearby and understand the guidelines for your local editing. The next thing, is that it's a very good idea to take a look around Waze Map Editor and click a few things and make sure you understand your surroundings. Um, of course, be careful not to save anything if you're only testing around, but it's infor important to feel confident about your use of the WME, so get to know it. You also have this slide in the handout, so you'll be able to go over it. Okay. So let's go over the map. Wait, uh, further, uh, I wanted to tell you to talk about this part. You also have the option to add places. Uh, we will go into it later. Um, it's a good idea to get to know this top bar because it contains the very important add roads, add places, all of those menus. It has the delete button, which we are very careful with. Uh, it has the undo button in case we're not sure about what we did or we want to find, find a mistake. And of course, it has the save button. That was the top one, the top bar. And now let's talk about the feed. The map editor feed is a really great way of staying on top of everything that's happening in your area and messages from your communities. Waze will also let you know about different things happening in your area. Uh, many of you might have gotten to this master class through the feed. So two more important parts of the WME for you to know today um, are the drives and areas where you can find the areas you can start editing in. Remember that at the beginning of your journey, you'll be able to edit all roads within a one mile radius around the places you've already driven. So you might find this drives and areas section helpful in understanding where you can drive. Now I'd like to share WME settings. You can find them on the left corner of the WME screen. Click the gear icon to open the settings section. And from the settings section, you can select the units, language, and environment for your Waze map editor. Environment is a very important setting to note 
The Waze map is built in a way that divides the world into three totally unevenly sized parts. The first environment is US and Canada. The second one is Israel, which got its own environment thanks to the fact that that was uh, that Waze was born there. And the third environment is for every other country in the world that isn't North America or Israel, and it's called world. So before you start editing, make sure your view is set to the right environment for you. I'm in Israel, so my environment for me to be able to edit here should be set to Israel. Feel free to change the environment to have a look at other regions, but at this starting point of your editing journey, you won't be able to edit those regions. This same environment picker is also available on top. It's the small text that says world right below the Waze logo in this image in the slide. If you see world, it means you're looking at neither North America nor Israel. Keep that in mind. So now let's move on to mentioning a few terms you should know. And you also have these in your handout. The first one is the one we've already mentioned, a segment. It's a part of the road. It's the smallest part of the road between two junction nodes. The second term is a junction node. And a junction node is a point on the road where two or more segments meet. The next one is a geometry node which is a point on the road that can be moved to reflect road shape or curvature. Next up, we have junction arrows, and they're very intuitive. We have a green arrow. That means that we can go this way, and a red arrow that means that you can't go th that way. And direction arrows, they're, they are small arrows on the segment which indicate the direction that the road is traveling. If there are no arrows, the road goes both ways. Okay, um, while editing the map, you will see map problems and update requests. Some of these are automatically generated and some of them are placed by Wazers. Map problems are auto-generated and indicate possible issues on the map. At this point in your editing journey, you can just overlook those. Update requests are generated by real users that report issues using the app. Yes, when you click to report a hazard, that is how it's reflected from the inside in the app. Isn't it exciting to see how it looks on the other side? Update requests or URs as we like to call them usually contain valuable information and you can actually message the users that reported the problem to ask for more information. So now we are going to go ahead and start working on WME. And for that, I'm going to pass the mic to our amazing guest today, our master in Waze Map Editing, Joe. Thank you very much for joining us, and the floor is all yours. I'm going to mute myself. All right. Thank you, Nat, uh, for that wonderful presentation. And hello, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. I hope uh, hope you guys enjoy. Um, so Nat gave a really great uh, overview of all the buttons and what everything, uh, where everything is on the Waze Map Editor. Uh, there we go. All right, can you guys see my screen? Or is it not loading yet? Okay. Uh, so this uh is the Waze Map Editor live. This is uh uh like actually what the Waze Map Editor looks like. That's just a slide photo. Um, so a lot of what Annette covered is what I'll go over kind of in real time here. Um. So to start, uh, one of the very first things you can do uh, when you first log in is add a road. So what you might see on the map around your wherever you may drive or live is a shopping mall like this. And it's kind of mapped like this where you can kind of get into some of it, but not all of it. Or maybe it's missing some of the, the lanes here, or maybe it's missing a new uh, exit junction, or um, you know it's not fully complete. Uh, so what you can do as the Waze Map Editor is add these roads in yourself. So if you go to the top here, we're under Roads. You'll just click on Road, and you'll see a little blue dot here. That means it's you're ready to add a road. Uh, so what you want to do first is you want to find a, um, a segment or a junction that you want to start with. So in this case, I want to start right here because the road continues on. So I'm going to click once here, and you'll see I have a little blue line. That's what the segment will look like uh, if I want to keep drawing it. Um, 
Now, if I want to do, if I want to make it more of a curve row or keep going around the bend here, uh, all you have to do is just click once, and it'll add a geometry handle or a little geometry node, uh, as some refer to it as. And you can keep going and draw as much as you want. So I'm going to keep going and draw a little more up here. Now I want to map this uh, this uh, exit and entrance over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to keep going. And when I want to complete my segment and I want to stop editing, or I want to complete the segment and not uh, add any more geometry handles, you'll want to double click. So I'm just going to double click right here, just for now. And you'll see I have my new segment drawn right here. And it even has little uh, arrows to point that show it's currently a one-way street. And that is where the editor uh, segment editor comes in play here. So you see we have lots of different options um, to start. You have things like address, road type, a couple of check boxes here, restrictions, directions, speed limits, and locks, and elevation. Um, so the first thing you want to do, and probably the most important, is click on address here. Now it may seem a little odd that it says address for a street, but what you're going to do here is you're going to add a street name and or a city name. Now in this case, this is just a parking lot road for a mall, so there isn't going to be a street name most likely, or in most cases, so I'm going to click the none checkbox. And uh, the city, I'm going to, oops, the city, there actually might be a city here. So I know the city is, is Glenview. So I know it's going to, I'm going to type in Glenview, although it's my autofill options are coming up here. Um, and then once I do that, I hit apply, and then I'll have no street in Glenview. And I hit save, and voila, I have my road in. Now, my road's not complete yet because I still have a few more details to add. Uh, the second thing I want to do is change the direction. Uh, if you just look at the satellite imagery, obviously this does not seem like a one-way street. You can go both directions. So the second thing I want to do is change my direction to two-way. You'll notice that the little arrows go away, and now it's just a solid blue line here instead. Uh, and you'll also notice the little red arrows here that I not mentioned. Uh, so the next most important thing is to make sure that you can enable a user to drive through it. So what I'm going to do is going to click on this segment right here. And I'm going to click on the arrow and it's going to turn green. I'm going to do the same thing for these two arrows. And I'm going to click on this one. So now I know that every possible turn through here is enabled. Now a little shortcut or trick that you can also do is you can click on this junction right here. And then if, uh, if a turn is not allowed, I'm going to undo that real quick. I can click Allow All Turns. Or if I know all turns aren't allowed, I can click Disallow All Turns and vice versa. But for now, I'm going to click uh, Allow All Turns, and I'm going to hit Save. So now I have a single segment right here that goes through. It's two-way. All turns are enabled right here. So I know that a user can be routed through here. Now uh, The next thing I want to do is I want to connect the road to this segment right here. Now, one thing to note, um, and I know somebody did ask about this in the um, in the Q and A uh, about segment locks. Uh, so, when you're a brand new editor, you are a rank one, uh, and you start off as level one, and you can edit level one roads. Now, this road right here, if you scroll down here, is oh, well, right now it's at it's at a five right now, but normally it might be something at like a three, or it might be at a two or a four. Um, so this might, you know, this might disable some people from actually touching the road. So when you're level one, you can't actually connect a segment to it. And that's where the map editor community comes in. And we can actually unlock and lower that road for you. So like Annette mentioned, this chat right here is a really, really great, useful tool. You can always ask, hey, can I have help uh, with a segment? Oh, and I can... And you send it, and uh, most likely you'll get somebody uh, on here who can help you with that. Um, and you can see each person has different levels on here. Oh, look at that. And Sketch help me out with the segment. He's going to help me out here. So we do our best to monitor this chat as best we can. Um, this is a great uh, tool to help you out with um, reaching out to the community, and we can even send you more links to that. Um, but let's say this segment gets unlocked for us, so the segment's at level one. I'm going to drag this node right here, and you'll notice it kind of has like a little magnetic snap to it. So when I get close to it, it kind of jumps to it. That means it's connected. That means that it's going to connect down to that segment, and you'll know it's connected because the red arrows will appear. 
one of the new uh, one of the mistakes that newer users make, and they can't really see it because the segment might be locked, is that they'll get really, really close to it, like right there. Oh, not quite there. Like right there. And if you zoom out a little bit, it kind of looks like it's connected, but you'll see that the arrows aren't there. So you want to make sure that you see those red arrows. I'm gonna do all those. So you want to make sure you see all those red arrows, and that's when you'll know that the segment is actually connected, uh, and that you can enable all the turns. And then what I'm going to do, since I know the left turns allowed here, and a left and a right there, and the right turns allowed there, I'm just going to click on the node and hit Allow All Turns. And I'm going to save. And just like that, I have almost, uh, I've just about finished everything I need to do with the road. So the last thing I want to do uh, is the road type. So when you click on a segment, you'll notice there's a drop down menu right here for road type. And we have lots of different kinds of roads here, um, like a, a runway or a railroad. Uh, even ferry and a couple other ones. Um, I'm not going to get into much detail about when to use which road and which, but in this case, we want to use a parking lot road because this is for a parking lot and for a like a strip mall area. And you can see the rest are all named parking lot roads as well. So I'm going to click on parking lot road and then I'm going to save. And it's just that easy. That's all you need to do. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, adding a new road. And you can also, under the same panel here, um, you have road. You can also add a pedestrian path, a roundabout, which I'm going to go over next, uh, a camera, uh, a railroad junction, a railroad crossing, and a junction box. These are currently only for, I think, rank four editors, depending on your country. So you may not see these in a big grayed out, but those you'll, you would learn later on uh, as you kind of continue to grow as a map editor. The next thing I want to do is show you how to add a roundabout. This is probably like one of the cool, like how it's done is one of the coolest things uh, when I first started editing how it works. So you see right here, I have an example of a little roundabout. Uh, it's currently not matched. I just have two streets that are connecting. So you can, you can get routed through and everything kind of works right now. Uh, so what you want to do first is I'm going to go up to roads. I'm going to go up to roundabout. And you'll see I have this little cross here, a little plus here. That means I'm right, I, as soon as I click on it, I'm going to start drawing a roundabout. So what I want to do is I want to kind of get in the middle of the roundabout right here. I'm going to press and hold, and you'll see I'm starting to make a little circle. I'm going to kind of go like right, uh, right there. And it'll go right there. I was a little off in the center, but that's pretty darn close, I'd say. And I'm going to let go. <clears throat> and just like that, it, it automatically um, brings the segment back over here and connects it to the roundabout for me and makes it a one-way segment as well. <clears throat> And then it brings you right to the same panel that I just did before. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to click on no street because there's no street name for this. <clears throat> and for the city, I know it's Glenview. And then always, always, always make sure you hit apply. And then I'm going to hit save. And just like that, I have my roundabout segment added. Now, another thing you can do, and this is more for, um, for streets that have more heavier traffic, you can also add speed limits. So if I click on this segment right here, you'll see I have a speed limit of 25 miles per hour. In that last example, there's not really a speed limit in a, in a, like a strip mall area. But for this particular segment, there might be a speed limit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the segment, go down to speed limit, type in 25. And same thing for this one. Click on it, type in 25, and then make sure I hit save. And there I go. Now I have my speed limit on my road. I have the right road type I want. Uh, the address is named. Uh, I'm not going to lock the segment because that's the segment I want to leave the, the lock I want to leave it at. And yeah, and everything looks great. All my arrows are enabled already. Um, I have my green. I have greens there, green there, and green there. So everything's enabled. So that's that's how you add a roundabout. It's pretty simple. It's actually really cool that it's able to automatically. Uh, connect the segment back here for you, even if you have them connected right here. I think that was probably my favorite thing when I first started editing the map. Uh, now, the next thing we're going to do, let me go down my thing here. Uh, the next thing is uh, the environment, like Annette mentioned. So uh, like Annette, she said she's in Israel, so she's going to be in the Israel environment. And for me, I'm in North America, so I'm going to be in the North America environment. So right here on the top left is the um, the drop down tab to switch between world, North America only, or Israel. So if you're somewhere in Europe per se, you would be clicking on world. If you're in um, Canada or the United States, uh, you would click on North America only. And if you're in Israel, you click on Israel. Um, 
another uh, tool you guys have is also you'll see is a map editor up here. You'll click, you kind of hover your mouse over here and you'll see default mode and event mode. Default mode is the just default like ways map editor where you guys can add your segments and all that. And then the event mode is really for MTEs or major traffic events. And those you can add at any level, which is really cool. If you go over here, um, you can, you'll get this little event page right here where you can see some events that are already uh, going on or happening soon. All you need to do is just click on add event and you'll see the event tab over here. You add a name to it. I'll call it test. Hit apply, and then you can choose the category. Maybe it's a construction project going on, or a parade for the 4th of July, or so have you. And then you click on the city, and you'll see the closest city to me is Glenview, so I'm going to click Glenview, and then a start and end times, and then all you do is hit save, and that's it. So that is a way to uh, alert users in your area. Um, so if there is a construction closure going on or a parade closure going on, um, that's going to impact a lot of people. You um, <clears throat> What that'll do is that'll uh, send a push notification to all the users in that the town I selected. So if I select the Glenview here, it's going to uh, send a push notification for all the users that are in Glenview saying, "Hey, this construction is or this closure is coming up soon. It might impact your your route. So make sure you have a heads up for that." So that's the event mode, uh, and that one can be used at any level. Let me go. Oh, oops. I gotta reload. All right, and then the next thing I want to talk about is places, uh, which is another big thing here in Waze. Um, so up here at the top, we already went through the roads tab here, and now we have the place tab. So you see we have lots of different options right here that you can use, but these are only just a few of them. Uh, these are kind of like the parent categories. So um, for example, car services might be a gas station or um, an auto mechanic, a, a car dealership. Uh, so each one of these is just a parent category, and there's others like kind of that go under it. Uh, so right here, I have a new McDonald's that actually just got added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on food and drink. And you'll see we have two options. We have this little circle and this like kind of little polygon here. This is for an area place, and this one's for a point place. So right now, I'm going to start off with a point place. So I'm going to click on point, and same thing with that segment. I'm going to get that little blue dot. and when I want to put it right where I do, right there, I'm going to double click. And then right here, you'll have the places tab or editing tab right here. And you'll see all um, the options I have for, for place editing. It's a little little similar to segment editing, but there's uh, some differences. Uh, so for example, you'll see we have address here, which is just about the same, except you'll be able to add a house number here. And you'll be able to add a street. Uh, so let's say I'm going to do, you know, for now, one, two, three is this house number. And then I'm going to choose, I think it's Thingston here. So you'll see if I even start typing the name, it will auto-populate in, in, um, in the editing panel here. And I can click that, hit apply, and now I have my address for my location. And then the next is the name, so I'm going to do McDonald's. And then here's where the categories come more into play. So you see I had clicked on food and drink. But you can see there's also several other categories that might fit better. So McDonald's might be food and drink, but is it really a restaurant? <sighs> Debatable. It's definitely not a coffee shop. Definitely not a food court or a bar. Uh, but it's definitely a fast food. So I'm going to click on fast food. And then it, auto it automatically goes to fast food. These are really helpful because a few of these categories you can actually search for in the app. So, for example, gas station. Uh, you want to have gas station as a category because then you can actually search just gas station or click on the category. Uh, gas station, and it'll show you all the gas stations in the area. Uh, there's also a drive through option right now, too. So if you select a place that has drive through um, you can uh, search for just drive through uh, locations, and then you can uh, kind of get a list of what is there. Uh, so down here at the bottom, we have entry points here. So it's, let's say, um, you know, your, your location, it, the actual entrance to it is a little bit different than where the point, the little uh, circle here is. Maybe the entrance is over here. I can drag that right there. And this is where the editor or where the user will, will be prompted to go to. Kind of like the, this is kind of like the front door, we'll put it, we'll, we'll say for now. It's like the front door of where you would want to enter. Uh, so this is where the user will be told to go, but they'll also be told that the place is right here. Uh, and then the next thing is the lock, just like segments. And then you also have the type of, uh, of place, so point, 
or if you want to make an area place, you can click on area and it will change to a little thing here, but I'll go over that in a minute. And then on this one, you have more info. So the website, so um, if you want the user to be able to go to the website and the app, you can type in the website. You can also have the phone number, so you can actually uh, call them from your phone. And then the various services like the drive through option that I mentioned, as well as restrooms, uh, air conditioning, outdoor seating, all delivery, takeout, all that other stuff. And then lastly, there's um, the hours, so you can actually add the hours of the place, whether it's a 24-7 location or has uh, more of a like nine to five thing. So that is point place. And the last thing I want to show you is uh, area place here. Let me undo all that. Um, so here I have a park. So let's say there's a park possibly near your house that isn't added or you want to add or a new park, let's say. So I'm going to go to place. And uh, outdoor seems to be the most fitting right now. Uh, so I'm going to click on that on the area one. And just like segment editing, I can click once and I can drag. Or it's, like, it's just going to keep on going for me. And I'm going to keep dragging. You'll see it's kind of making a little polygon here. Uh, so if I keep clicking, it's going to keep on making more geometry nodes. Uh, so let's just kind of make a little shape here. And when I want to be done editing the polygon, I just double click here and then I have my area place. And then same thing, uh, just like for the McDonald's place, I have all my categories and the addresses and name and uh, everything. So I'm not going to go through all that again, but you have all those options again as well. Uh, and a couple other things I want to go through before I finish my part is uh, I not mentioned the uh, the community, the Waze community, and um, we have a lot of different resources out there uh, to help you with your editing. So one is the Wazepedia or the Wiki. Uh, each uh, for the United States, each state has their own Wazepedia page. It has lots of good information on editing in your state or your country. Uh, so you can see here just a little you know brief. Uh, intro on the contents of what you might have. There's different uh, resources, the actual community, so where you can join us on Discord, or if we have a Google Hangout or a Slack channel, and then different, uh, you know, you know, nuanced editing or different kind of uh, editing tips and whatnot for us. So like our road naming and road type possibly, or turn left turns. So this is a really, really good area to go uh, if you're looking to start editing. This has a lot of good resources, very specific to where you're at. Um, so this is a really good place to start. Another place to start is the best map editing practice page. This has a lot of good info on just kind of some best map editing practices that you um, might not know of because there's a lot of things we do in the Waze Map Editor that might seem a little odd or different. But there's usually a method to our madness, and there's usually uh, a reason for why we do things. Maybe there's a, a hidden reason that you can't see, or there's a back-end thing going on that we, we want to show you, but we cannot show you. So this is a good place just to, to go through um, some of the things that, we, that are good to do, and good things, things that are good to do, and things that are not good to do. Um, so this is a really good resource. And then lastly is your editor profile. So if you click on, let's say I have a segment right here. You'll see it was last edited by me and created by this editor, Big Bear. If you just click on your name, this page will pop up, and this is your editor profile. So this is where you can go to view all of your edits. So you can see I have a little pills here with different editing, and you can see I edited 488 times that day and a little less more often. Um, but you can see this is where all of you can go through all of your edits in case you made a mistake and someone say, hey, uh, can you go back and fix that that mistake your, or this error you did a couple days ago? You can go over here and you can actually click on load more and it'll tell you, oh, I updated one node. I made one update to an update request and I edited two segments. Uh, or same thing here. Or this one here, I added a segment and I removed two segments um, and I updated. So this, it's a good page to go um, in case you made a mistake or you think, oh, I think I want to change something how I did earlier, but I can't remember where. And it'll even show you on the map where you made those edits. So you can see a pretty precise location of where you made those edits. So it's right around here on the map. And you can kind of go into the editor and click on it. And then it'll actually show you the segment that you edited. Um, so this is a really good tool to use in case you did make a, a mistake or somebody, a senior editor reached out to you and asked, hey, can you go back and fix something for me or change this or show me what you did here? You can just go right to your profile, and you can click on the pay, on the edit, and then you, it takes you right there. Uh, and that's all I have uh, as far as 
me double check my oh house numbers yes the last thing i wanted to do um another great thing you can do is house numbers so um when you have a seg segments like this right here and let's say you live right here and it's not routing you correctly in ways it's telling you to go you know two blocks this way or, or two blocks to the north and it's really aggravating you and you want to fix it you can actually change the house number yourself in ways so if you click on the segment right here you say i have it selected and it pops up right here i can scroll down and i can click on edit house numbers and then you can actually see all the house numbers right here um for this street and you can click on it and you can you know add a number to it or you can delete uh, or if the house number is gone you can delete it you can also click on this little circle here and move the house number around so in case it's actually over here and not over there and then you'll want to just hit save and then you can uh that's how you fix your house number uh and then you can click on exit house number here and just like that you can you fix where your, ho your house ad address is so that's it for me uh i'm going to turn it over to a knot um as always, if you guys have any questions, please uh, write them in the Q&A. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joe. That was so wonderful. With your skill and experience, I'm sure everyone here feels more confident about editing now. Uh, maybe even looking forward to editing your first segment to the map. And now um, let's move on to some questions. So, Joe, it would be great if you can help us answer those. Maya and I already responded to the more general questions already. So why don't you open your mic and cam and go ahead. Okay. So I'm gonna get a drink of water there. Uh, the okay. first question, um, oh, my camera too. Let me turn my camera on. There we go, okay. Uh, how does big detour prevention work? This is a loaded question. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, how about, uh, Emil, I'll take this one offline with you if you want. This is, uh, um, this is more of a, very, a more of an experienced editor question. It's a great question uh, and definitely one that has a lot of answers and a lot to it. Um, but uh, big detour prevention is a, a mechanism in ways and how it how it routes you around um, on certain roads road types. Um, so I'll take that one offline with you. But it is a great question, um, but not one that I can answer within the time allowed here because we're I don't want to take up too much time with that. Uh, next question, is it okay uh, to draw every PIO greater than 500 meters squared as an area? Great question. Uh, we actually have a resource for you guys. Um, let me, uh, this is, let me turn my screen on to, okay, so we actually have a ways of P or a wiki on this. So if you search for uh, WME places, um, we have a, no, hold on. maybe it wants to load. Okay, maybe not. Well, th this page right here, if it were to load, it has a, a great resources of when to use an area place and when to use a point place. So it has a little table at the end where it says, you know, here's, here's the category, and this is when you should use it as a point place, when you should use it as an area. The big thing to really know the difference on is that area places will obviously show in the app. Um, Parks will show up as uh, kind of like a green, a, a green tint, like a darkish green tint, and then every other place is like gas stations or you know any other kind of place that you put in there is going to show up as a gray, um, a gray uh, rectangle. Um, so that's a great resource, and actually I, I can send the link in the chat here. I'll put it in the chat. So that's the uh, link to that page. Um, the next question here, can you say something about permalinks? Ah, yes, permalinks is a great question. Uh, so how we send each, uh, locations to each other in the Waze map editor, share my screen again, uh, is the permalink function. So if you want to say, if you want to send a message to somebody and, and ask for help, like, Hey, can I have this segment unlocked? Uh, wait for my screen to go. Okay. There it goes. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the place. And then you want to click on the segment that you want to select or send. So if this is the segment I want to have unlocked because I want to make a change to it. I'll select it. And on the bottom right corner here, you see this little chain icon. And when I hover over, it even tells you you can press Control C. Or think if you're on a Mac, it's Command C. So what you want to do is just on your keyboard, uh, hold Control and then C, and you'll see permalink copied. 
and then you can post the permalink in you know a DM or just you know command uh, or control V or you know right click and paste. Um, yeah, I'll, put, I'll put it up here, right there, and that's my segment. Actually, I'll even put it in a new web page. And it'll load that the exact spot I was and the exact segment I had selected too. So the same thing goes for places too. If you want to select a place, um, you can click on the place and do the same thing, control C, and then you can send that exact place to somebody or, or they can send it to you, however uh, it might be. Uh, what level do I uh, need to edit street numbers? Uh, so house numbers, uh, it should be the segment level that you are, um, the, seg the lock level the segment's at. So if this segment right here is uh, a level one or auto one, you have you can be a level one editor and edit the house numbers. If the segment is at a lock level of five, four, three, two, one, or five, four, three, two, two, or six, then you have to be at that level. But the thing you can do is you can actually ask somebody to unlock it for you. So if you want to post in the form and say, hey, can I have this segment unlocked uh, to adjust the house number, uh, you can absolutely do that and we can unlock it for you. And then we can lock it right back once it's done. Um, or if it wants, if we can, if we want to say that level, we can leave it at that level. Does that answer your question? All right. Uh, next one. Is there a specific requirements to becoming an, an area manager in a country where it is not so much used, but slowly growing? Ah, okay. That's a great question, Travis. So this Travis's question is: um, Are there any requirements to become an area manager uh, in a certain country where there's not a lot of uh, editors and it's kind of slowly getting more and more editors? Uh, so what I would do is I would uh, reach out to whoever is the coordinator for that country uh, and. We can let's go. So if you go to the, this is the Waze forum. So this is the very first page. So if you want to uh, find a specific country, you can go to local forums by country, and you can select whichever country you might be in. And I would post in here. So if I want to, um, you know. And if I were interested in going to Croatia and editing there, I would look through the Croatian uh, forum and see if there is either somebody I can reach out to, uh, or I would just make a post in here and say, hey, I'm interested in being an area manager. Um, you know, what, uh, what sort of things do I need to do, or who can I reach out to to help me with that process? And then I'm, they, I would say within a day or so, somebody will reach out to you or they'll respond to your post. Um, so the, the community forums are very very useful place to go for um, edit editing questions that you might have, or if you want to reach out to somebody in a country you may not be in or live in. Uh, another question is, what third party plugins would you recommend for the new editor and how does the newbie tell if the plugin is limited for more advanced levels? Uh, so uh, the way the map editor is, is great and has a lot of functionality to it and does a lot. But there are some things that some editors have done to help make it um, easier or might do something a little bit different. Uh, we call those waste scripts. Um, so actually, I might have a. Actually, I don't have to do it. Um, so uh, what you can do is you can look for scripts um, in the form here. Let's see. So if you go to Waze Map Editor, uh, you can go to Add ons, Extensions, and Scripts. And here is a, a form where uh, whoever has a new script, they're going to post uh, a link to it. So you can see there's lots of different scripts here that um, do certain things. Uh, you know, something with, with house numbers. This one uh, is a highlighter. It highlights different things. This one is a layer saver, so it saves your layers. Um, and other ones might not be so obvious, like Toolbox might have different functionality. So what you can do is click on each of these and go through and see which ones uh, each one's do. As far as um, new yeah, scripts for new editors, I would definitely recommend Toolbox is definitely a big one to use. Um, Color Highlights is a great one. Uh, oh man, I, I should have thought of this more, uh, a little more before we started this. Um, those are probably the two I'd recommend right now. If, just off the top of my head, there's a couple more probably, but those are two I would, I would recommend. Um, they don't, uh, they have a couple of useful tools on there just for, for you to help editing. It's not anything that's 
that's um, you need to have or can't edit without, but it just has a couple extra tools on there that might highlight uh, certain things that might need to be fixed or they might uh, make some editing types a little faster or easier. Um, but you can also reach out to your local community too and ask which kind of scripts do they recommend to. Uh, how is it possible to change the map view to say, oh, great question. So as Annette mentioned, there's a layers tab over here. So if you go to the right side here, there's layers tab. And you can see there's lots of different layers here. So um, so this is, so satellite view right here, you can turn on and off if you um, if you don't need it. I, there's not many times you don't need it, but the, um, most of the time you'll probably need it on. So you can toggle it on and off. One of the layers that really uh, got me messed up at first is the area managers one. So if I click on it, you'll see, Everything just turns blank, and it kind of freaks you out at first. Um, but don't worry, it happens all the time. You can just go to the Layers tab and untab it, or unclick it. There's a shortcut for it, which is Shift-A. So if you accidentally push Shift-A, it might pop up. Um, but when in doubt, just go to the Layer panel and make sure you have that turned off. Um, there's also GPS points, so you can look at the actual GPS points the users are driving, which is a lot around here. <laughs> Uh, and then a couple other ones, uh, map comments, and then segments, road closures, cameras. And then this is where the map issues are that um, are not mentioned, the UR, so you can turn those on and off, um, and places as well. So you can turn on places. You can see there's lots of different area places around here um, that will show up in the map. And then the, um, the other one is street view. So if you go little guy down here, so if I'm going to zoom in right here, I can click and drag, and then when it, the arrow turns blue, I can let go, and I get street view right here. And I can uh, pan around with my mouse, or I can click on the arrows and move a little more, and that is uh, the latest street view they have there. And uh, it looks like that's all the questions for now. Yeah, I even closed out the Q&A section because it seems like we have a wonderful bunch of curious people, but we're almost out of time. So thank you very, very much, Joe, for answering all those questions. Maya and I um, uh, replied to a few via text. I hope everyone saw the replies to their questions. Um, if not, the recording for this session will be available. Uh, in the same link in a few hours. So in case you want to rewatch it or you know someone that missed it and want to watch it, they can go to the same link. So once again, I wanted to thank Joe very, very much. You did a wonderful job and your experience teaches so many people how to add and edit and improve the map. Thank you also to Maya who didn't open her camera today, but she actually initiated and started this whole project. So lastly, I want to thank everyone for joining us today here. And I want to ask you one last thing before you start your editing journey. Once we click on edit, uh, on close, end, end, end room, this same tab will turn into a survey and we want to hear what you think about this webinar. So keep the tab open to answer the survey. That's it from us today. We want to see your editing activity. We want to see you contribute to the map. Thank you for joining us and thank you very much, Joe. It was a pleasure. Thank Bye. you. Pleasure is online. Take care, everyone.